Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, America. Press, stop. I mean, that's what they used to do on old radio shows. How are you? This is Tracy Spivey, or as on uh, IG, Spivey4994. And I was allowed to pitch this game. Had some bad pitching news here in the New York area, but that's another story. But um, I was allowed to pitch this game over here at Nerd Generation with Mr. That's right. Say it twice. Pablo. Solano. Hey. Pete, how we doing? Hey. We're doing all right. Yeah, we're holding you out. Know, as long as you Are we holding out? Yeah. You good. Yeah, you're good. Don't see other people. <laughs> and I just said that. I just said that just to lighten the mood because, you know, that's impossible. <laughs> but I don't want to get it. I, I mean, it's, 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 it's turning into Vincent Price last man on earth, which later became Charleston Heston, the Omega Man, which later became Will Smith. I am legend. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that, we gave you some movie. We gave you some movie history, huh? Trying to lighten the mode, trying to lighten the scene. But we're gonna get right into this. We have some speculative news. I wouldn't call it news because. The contracts haven't been signed, the I's haven't been dotted, and the T's haven't been crossed. But apparently, there's a little scuttlebutt. Ah, you see, I got the word scuttlebutt in. The, let me see the next podcast to be able to do that. Get the word scuttlebutt into your podcast. I dare you. But anyway, there's a little scuttlebutt out there that we might possibly see the return of Mr. Robert Downey Jr., to the MCU. Yes, that's right. Dr. Doolittle may make a return to the MCU. And when the news came out, of course, conversations flew out over the airways because we just don't know what else to do because, we, you know, the governor told us to sit on our hands and, like, good little boys and girls, that's what we're going to do. But all the speculation came out, all the uh, stories and uh Hypotheses came out, and I was just wondering. I thought personally, P, the people who actually get the initial slap in the face, I mm -hmm. guess, is the writers and the Russo brothers. That we didn't even go a year, and if Robert Downey Jr. comes back, they just undid the snap. Isn't that the first thing you thought of? That they just they just slapped the Russos right across the face, pop pop pop. Mm -hmm. But but you know, but this is a business, and and I don't get too far. I mean, that's why. We at AKs and, and and you being you, you know you with AKs and now nerd generate we always 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 factored in business. We never got into tangents where it's just fan casting or fan thought process. We always made it business, and I understand that a lot of people don't understand that, but I understand that. Um, how do you feel about it when I when I first heard this stuff? I thought about the Russos and said, wow, we didn't even go a year, and they just pop. Okay, we're going to start all over. So what, what did you think? When I heard this, and I mean, this is not like it's, been, it's just, this has been a rumor for a while. This has been a yeah. rumor yeah. for some time, but it is still just like, <laughs> and I hate to say it, just like, Release the Sonata Cut. This, <laughs> oh, like my God. Oh, my God. It has only gotten stronger, you know. <laughs> and yeah, you know, yeah. here's the difference for me. Here's the difference. Steve Rogers, Cap, uh, Chris Evans wanted, he wanted to say goodbye or or, or do other things. Or whatever. And yeah, 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 whatever. Right. There is room to bring that guy back. And oh, he could Marvel, be back. And I, he could be in the future. I, he could be. Yeah. He 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 got a good deal out of this. Yeah, and Marvel. See, Marvel's gonna come to Chris Evans and be like, "Come back." Yeah, RDJ, because I got this project. R D J chose to say goodbye. I'm not coming back. Sort of attitude towards this. So you mean we? So are we putting it out there that we think at the end of Endgame, because of whatever? And I think it was contractual necessities and Disney being a company and with Lucasfilm and all of that. You know, they said we can't afford to pay. So you think that basically it was well, I'm leaving because you're not going to do this or do that. So just write me out. So instead of just passing the Iron Man torch to somebody else, they chose to say, oh well, we'll just kill him off. Heroically, is it, is that what we're saying? The the way I saw is that RDJ wanted out. 
He wanted out. Okay. And if it was because he wanted more than Marvel was willing to give him, they came to this um, resolve, let's say. Right? Okay. And he and, and the way I see it is that, and here's the difference, Chris Evans, Marvel going to reach out to him. Of course. We want him back. Right? Of course. RDJ chose to leave. And he's only coming back because of what happened with Dr. Doolittle. And subsequently, I guess Sherlock Holmes 3 being placed in hiatus. And maybe, um, you know, uh, you, you know, and this is all speculation. Maybe Netflix wasn't going to pay a price to have him do some startup or some new thing. And maybe, maybe, maybe his thing is he doesn't want to do streaming. Maybe he just wants to be the classical movie star. When everybody else is, you know. This is the Christopher Reeve complex. And what I mean by that is Christopher Reeve could no do nothing else better than what he did with Superman. Tell me yeah. what you remember Christopher Reeve for doing. I remember Somewhere in Time, which I... That's the only movie, that. and I was about to quote that. That was the only movie we heard Somewhere in Time. With, I think it was Jane Seymour. I think yes. it was Jane Seymour. Yeah, she was beautiful. Oh, that's when, oh, Jane Seymour was, forget about it. Yeah, but I think Christopher Reeve's time of being the Superman and then jumping to do something like Somewhere in Time was two extremes. He didn't, it, it's a different era, it was the 70s. He didn't have a way to go because he was a movie star and I don't think he could have did TV. He couldn't have been our fall guy. He couldn't have been yeah. Dan but Tanner. He, yeah. He couldn't you have been vague. Don't Vegas. remember him for anything else. You don't yeah. remember him for anything else. And then the accident, and then that was pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty much it. Yeah. You know, there was no, liked, there was I no other them, role. I liked them in, I liked them in switching channels. Yeah, but then he didn't. He had no Max Headrooms. He had no Knight Rider. You just get. He was Superman, and that was. Listen, RDJ is a great actor. He is fantastic, right? But this is the role that defined him. And I think, I don't know if he has a bunch of yes men around or he just thinks too highly of himself that he can do whatever he wants and it'd be dope. Okay, I, I, I see what you're saying. You're saying bigger than the business. And the business changes yeah. every day. The business, yeah. the, the business changes every day. At one minute, you're talking about Stranger Things. And then next minute, you're talking about the Umbrella Academy. And the next minute, yeah. you're talking about... There's so many things that grab the there's public so attention. That pop every boys. day. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Look at yeah. the boys. Look at, look look at the boys. It, it's, and if you're not in it's the so game... so much more than you. It's so yeah, much more If than you're you. not in the game and you don't think like that... You can still be caught up. Well, I'm, I'm saying, somebody can say, and, and, and listen, somebody can say, hey, man, that's passe already. Really? Yeah. 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 I mean, Batwoman ain't going to make it, and I'm saying that right now. Uh, you know, and I, I talked to a couple of heads, and they feel certain reason why it's not going to make it. It's not like, it's not, Batwoman is good on paper, but they just can't seem to, to you know, to get it on screen correctly. It, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's not working and it has nothing ladies and gentlemen it has nothing to do with preferences or ideology or identification that that's no no the, you know once you get past those things and i think the, what the most the public does is we just just show on the show we don't care about that the person was blue and that they supported green rights and and when they go home they go home to a red house nobody cares how's the show the show's not good. Oh. Oh, okay. See, once again, once you get past that other stuff, how's the show? But getting back to R RDJ, apparently, ladies and gentlemen, there's a deal out there that he will return as subsequently being the Let, and AI. Let's, and, let's, and let's point out for much less money than he was asking for. Of course, because he's just doing a vocal. He's just doing voiceovers. Or he's doing a voice continuum. And, okay, um, I guess this 
brings in a paycheck, I guess until he fills out the next project that he actually wants to get involved in. I guess that's that's what this is. But I, you know, the initial reaction that I was talking about and a lot of people were talking about was how do we come back? How do we do it? And we just automatically knew. We talked to uh, Freddie Freddie Fox. Freddie would have been here tonight, but he had some engagements. No, Freddie's uh, home taking care of his uh, Iron Man armor like he always does. But the fact that we were thinking, well, how do you do it? And we automatically knew it. Once Doctor Strange, the mouth of mad, the mouth madness of the what was the mouth of madness. No, that was that other movie. Doctor Strange the multi, and the multi multiverse of, of madness. Listen, they don't just call it Doctor Strange MCU open door. We can now do anything. <laughs> Okay. What? Once this, once this movie comes out, we can now do anything. anything. <laughs> so, anything is fair play. Anything is fair play. But you know what? The the general audience, we gotta like the way they got us here. They did it yeah. linear. It wasn't confusing. Uh, stab DC. Stab DC. It was done a certain way. Warner Brothers don't know what they're doing. It was done a certain way that the general public can, can, can get there. And now that we're here, like we just said, we can do anything, which means we can, we can literally grab Tony Stark an hour before the end game. You can grab anybody from out of time, out of the time stream. And, yeah, you can do it. How, now, how do we feel about that? We say, yeah, you can do it. Did we think it would be cheap? But, but, uh, but you how, know. Do you, how do you feel that it can possibly turn into, possibly, not saying that it will, because there's rumor of him coming back as an AI. Yeah, the AI, AI yeah, Iron the Heart, AI. Or possibly, um, that I think most likely in Black Widow because it's based in a, in a specific timeline. Yeah, but Black, Black Widow is easy to do because that was in time. Yeah, that was before, yeah, he, exactly, before exactly. he supposedly okay. died. Yeah. So you're talking going forward. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Going how forward, do you feel of it, how do you feel of it possibly being somewhat of a um, Harrison Wells of the Flash situation? I knew you were going there. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, all of you guys that's out there that no longer even watch the Flash because <laughs> you like me. Once you start doing time travel, I'm out. Why? Because that means all rules are off, all laws are broken. You can do whatever you want now. But Once you do say, time but travel, say, but, but some would say this multiverse of madness uh, scenario does the same sort of thing. Oh no, it does. We we were looking at it. The multiverse will introduce mutants, vampires, werewolves, sorcerers, more sorcerers. But apparently, there were already sorcerers. But they just never dwelled on whether vampires, witches, demons, I mean, were they already, was, is, was Mephisto around when Dormammu was doing, I mean, you, it was, was Nightmare around? I mean, all these things now, once that Doctor Strange movie comes out, and once Wanda does what she does in WandaVision, nothing's off the, nothing's off the hook. So could you bring Robert Downey Jr. back? Yeah. Because now there's no so, limitations. So, so the difference between um, the Flash's version of time travel and this version of time travel is that is not just as simplistic as the Flash situation is. This has a lot of layers that construct that uh, possibility of all these things happening, correct? No, you're absolutely correct. And the one thing that Marvel has over a TV show, I had 10 years to build this. The TV shows, either you build it or you cancel. So we, so TV shows, we can't get into exposition. Look at the Umbrella Academy. And, I, I, and, and who don't love that kid? You got to love that kid. That kid, he's the, <laughs> listen, I saw the kids. I saw, he's the whole show. The fact that that kid is hopping back and forth in time, but he keeps it. Now, you got to like this about the Umbrella Academy. He keeps it linear. He tells you a, B. He doesn't get crazy now that we're uh, dogs can fly, cats can swim. <laughs> he, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't open the universe like that. He just says, "This is what's happening." Like Wells. Wells. Wells comes back a different person every time the Flash runs down the hallway. I mean, this is crazy, <laughs> and it and, and it turns some people off. And yeah, you yeah. can't apply. You can't. You can't apply back to the future rules. Oh, if you see yourself, you're supposed to 
the two of you can't exist at the same time or you can't allow yourself. Not for nothing. This is great TV rules and it keeps the it keeps the audience member engaged. It really does. Yeah. It oh uh-huh. oh let's see if he breaks a time loop rule. But remember, we got Kang the Conqueror coming. Kang used to yeah. be Ramatut. Ramatut turned into Kang, Kang turned into a mortis. So now if that's throwing you up and you and your head is going, Oh God, I gotta deal with it. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, kinda. Yeah, you gotta kinda deal with that now. But but one of the biggest things that can come out of this, another Hulk character, we might see the, the Magestro, the Hulk from a thousand years in the future, the Hulk that that tells you how each and every hero died, or like Thor and Hercules, they left, they left Earth. To I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of open doors now. But the thing with R D R D J coming back. Like you said, there's a lot of different doors that could be swung open with this. Uh, we can go into the speculation, but the first thing I thought of, I'm sorry, the writers who built the first three phases, I guess you understand that this is a business, and guess what? We thank you for your work. You got paid, paid for hire, but now we might want to go in a different direction, which might contradict what you did, and I think everybody has to accept that. That what they did is not the Bible. Yeah. We now have the opportunity to come in and and rewrite some things, and it's based on the real world. Uh, this character, this actor wants to leave. That producer wants to do stuff. That's another thing that's out there. I'm looking forward to it because I would like to see how Sam Raimi operates in the MCU. This is exciting. Yeah. It really is, but yeah, but right yeah, now yeah. because of our current status, real world. We everything is on hold, but this thing snuck in, and you know there was speculation that maybe this is Robert Downey's ego. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe he just. He, and I said it to you and a couple other people. How could you not want to be part of the MCU with all the new stuff coming in? This stuff, what? man. Reed Richards is coming. Hello, Doctor Doom is coming. Professor X is coming. Where else can you have a universe like this? This is this is it. No, man. where else can you star in a film that everybody is going to see? What, how Dude, that, how being addictive in an is MCU that? MCU film jumpstarts yeah. careers right now. How addictive is being and in and in the universe that's coming? You now got Spidey with X Men, Deadpool, Wolverine. I mean, and that's just the Earthbound characters. And now you got Daredevil, Punisher, a new Luke Cage, a new Iron Fist. Uh, man, come on, man. Yes. How could you? I, now, I can't blame him. I can't blame him. Listen, but I, so for me, for me, when I hear people talk about, oh, I jumped off the train, I'm kind of done. So you. Are you out of your mind? Is what I have to ask you. I have to ask you that. <laughs> You're done. What are you done? What what's done? Have you seen it all? Comic book fans, true comic book fans that love yeah. this genre, will 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 live till their last breath watching. Oh yeah, these films, ladies and gentlemen, Fin Fang Foom is coming. <laughs> this is crazy. It's crazy. That's the universe we live in now. Yeah. The Mandarin could be a bad guy. Guess what? That's allowed now. Ten years ago, we didn't mm-hmm. do it because we didn't offend anybody. It was too much of a 1940s racist type of... No, then, you know, the Mandarin could be a bad guy. And now we find out that he actually is empowered by the Ten Rings that was brought back from an alien race of dragon-like... I mean, this is great. P, we got dragon-like characters. We didn't even say he was a real dragon. He's just an alien shaped like a dragon. I'm in. You know what I'm more interested in seeing? Not necessarily. You know, I'm interested in and excited to see the characters, but how they pull this off visually. Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. You're gonna see a dra- Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be crazy. This is gonna be crazy. And we know it's gonna be good. We know it's gonna be good. They t- They built ten years to build in this machinery. They got Can ILM, Pixar. Yo, they got everything home. under in their pockets. <laughs> Kevin Foggy needs to stay his butt home. Stay yeah, home. Yeah, 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 Kev. We got, we got to put you in a, in a, in a tube. This. We got to put you in the ice like Cap. No, we can't have nothing happen to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Protect the boss. Oh, my God. Hells yeah. We got to protect Hells the boss. Yeah. 
And Disney, that's how you're going to bounce Brett back, just like when this is over. This is how you're going to bounce back. Kevin Feige still running the Marvel Studios. We 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 coming right back, just like that. All you're doing, all this is doing, and it's and it's something to be excited about, in a sense. It gives Marvel more time to fine tune whatever they think they need to fine tune. It it's just so time. funny that the two. Megalopolises over at Disney, Marvel and Lucasfilm, you would have thought Star Wars had the advantage. And now it looks like, I'm sorry, I think it's safe to say at this point in time, Marvel Studios is the better run kid over at Disney. That does anything wrong with the other kid. The other kid just needs to get straightened out. Okay. You, got your two, okay. you got your two children. One's just doing Better than the other one because that one is base. That one is basically the best organized studio right now on the planet. If this really, it's a well-oiled yeah, yeah. machine. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. other one, I mean, he I, could I'll be, to, listen, but you know, listen. The other one just obviously shows us that they just wanted to to, to start anew. They've done that, but the way they did it it was kind of sloppy. If I would have felt the same feeling I had when Return of the Jedi ended, I would have been happy. Okay. They didn't end it that way. They were kicking me in the butt, trying to get me out the room. We're done with you. That's how it felt. I, I, I just think with the other kid, you got two great kids. One kid's just a little messed up right now. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I gotta laugh, yo. When I heard Palpatine was still, is this brother? Yeah, that, I'm, 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 <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you talk about wrapping it up? Wow, you guys went all the way back. Let's bring Pop that that the, the His whole time was hovering with mad stuff in him. It was just ridiculous. What kind of drugged out dude? Oh my God! Yeah, you know what? Just, since oh, I didn't see the body, this. since I didn't see the body, Mace Window was still alive. I'm sorry. If we're gonna go there. <laughs> let's go there. Yes, I didn't baby. see a body. Mace Window <laughs> is still alive. Ever see? <laughs> you got two great kids. It's just that one of them is a little messed up right now. One of them is they can they can they can technically wow. do it because you know they're bringing back. You know that Rosario Dawson got uh, um, casted to be. Uh, What's that Jedi's name? Female Jedi's name? Yeah, I know you're talking about. Uh, but 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 that's that's looking at towards that, the future with the movies. Yeah, exactly. But that I think from the Mandalorian, Mandalorian started off a new sort of a renaissance of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God, thank God. Yeah. We got some and interest. They're continuing with this, they're continuing it with this. But like you said, canceling or moving on from the Skywalker lineage. Didn't have to be so heavy-handed and sloppy, and and that's basically what it was. Because Rogue One, Rogue One is still one of the best movies ever created. That that movie, and I and me like everybody, I had no interest in watching that movie, and then when I saw that movie, I, I tears. I hadn't seen a movie like. I mean, I mean, it's just like what the Rogue One is one of the best movies ever made. It was just well done. It just just to have that connection to the beginning of it all. And at the you know, and then at the end of Rogue to One, see what you, happened immediately yeah. before that film. Yeah, and the thing and they that did it so gracefully. And the thing that I, I wasn't, I said, I don't want to see how they got the, the I don't want to see how they got the the, the plans to that. Who wants to see that? Who wants to see that? And then once I saw that movie, oh my god! Yeah. So now when you watch the New Hope, you go, wow! I saw Rogue One and the New Hope. Wow! It just it's just not even. Rogue One is now more important than the New Hope. The New Hope is now off of Rogue One. What those yeah. people did and they sacrificed. I yeah. mean, yeah. that was a yeah. wartime film and it was great. Rogue One was great. And now when Lucas says he wants to come back, wait a minute. George wants to come back? Because he wants to write the ship. I, and, I, and, if he, and if he comes back, sort of like a Kevin position for Star Wars... I'm in. But this is the guy that killed off Darth Maul. And I can hear the, the guys in the comment section. He killed off Darth Maul. He had no foresight. I, mean, I said, that's a different. Listen, 
You know, it's so funny. It's the world before Marvel Studios and the after Marvel Studios. We can sit back now and say, oh, you didn't think about the future. And, oh, back at that time, there was no future. He didn't know that the, the world would turn. Nobody knew a Marvel Studios was coming and would tell people how to make these serial serial type franchises. Nobody did this before. And that's why we can call uh, Kevin Feige this generation's P.T. Barnum. He's the man. He he's the man. He took the wheel and he just made it better. He didn't he didn't invent the wheel. He didn't reinvent the wheel. He just took the wheel. And he made it better. Now can Lucas get aboard something like that and do it properly? I don't know. That part I, think I don't he know. Can. I think he can. He killed off Darth Maul. Hopefully, <laughs> but hopefully, let's, but hopefully he does it with the right people around him. Because I'm quite certain that Kevin Feige got some. Good people. Oh yeah, but Kevin's got bounces off Louise ideas, and, and he's George got Lou. Lucas has to be willing. George Lucas has to be willing to listen to these ideas and have conversations and decide the best route to take this. You know, and I think he could do that. George Lucas can't take that phone call from Samuel Jackson talking about bring back Mace Window. <laughs> 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 this ain't hey, Sam. This ain't hey, Sam. This ain't personal. Show okay, we just don't make movies for people's pro but anyway, yeah. And like I said, until I see the body, makes windows now still alive. If if Papa T can be alive, windows alive, baby. Windu, yes. wind with the wind man. Because if you watch the cartoons, oh my god, that he is one of the most powerful Jedi masters you've ever seen. I can't believe he died falling out of the window. Nah, nah, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. If you could bring back. Darth Maul and Palpatine, yes, you can do yeah, that. Yeah, I don't believe a happen. window is still alive. My man is still alive. Now, I'm kind of mad at him because we're going to say, well, where the hell you been? <laughs> <laughs> but that's why, getting back to Robert Downey Jr., once we get back to, I guess, a regular world, and we can look forward to things again, because right now we still, you know, we're still in this position. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. wanting to come back, no brainer. Who wouldn't want to be part of this whole machinery? Should he have come way, back? The, 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 the way is the way this is happening. I just it just it just is like you know you could have you could it could have been done in a better way. I think egos was a big part of it. Um, but I'm glad to have him back if they can make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? It, it, oh it yeah. Can't be no no dumb stuff. But as long as he's not trying to take the glamour away from, I mean, we got Blade coming, we got Blade coming, and and we the Eternals are coming, and maybe Nova, and and of course we got the Fantastic Four coming, and they're going to be the flagship until they make that Captain America Invaders movie. And ladies and gentlemen, I've been, we've been saying that for years that that's coming. That is coming. Showing Chris Evans back in, and, and now that they got the rights and the characters back, we're going to see the Human Torch and Toro. Remember back in the day, back in the 70s, ladies and gentlemen, they wouldn't put the, they wouldn't put the Fantastic Four on ABC mornings because they thought the Human Torch's character would cause kids to set themselves on fire. That's right. That's in the books. Look it up. That's why you got Herbie the Robot. That's why you got Herbie the robot. But like, like I said before, we can actually have a Mandarin and a dragon in a Marvel movie without offending people anymore. So, the, so like I said, being, being uh, envious of Robert Downey Jr., at least he gets to come back in. Now, if they start trying to make Iron Man 4, if he, if he wants an Iron Man 4, then we're going to have this podcast back again and saying, wow, we got an Iron Man 4. Because maybe Robert Downey Jr. says, I want to fight the Mandarin. He's my character. I want to have that film before they put me in a box. Yeah. It'd be kind of hard to deny him that. Because the Mandarin was his his foe. Yeah. And because of political reasons, they didn't want to do it. But now that... The, that's off the that's off the cat's out the bag now. So he might say, "Listen, we got to have that Mandarin movie. We got to have that, and then I can end Iron Man. And if you gave Thor, yeah. you gave Hemsworth four movies. Why can't I get four movies? Because we know Evans is going to get four and five movies. Believe that. That Invaders movies is coming. Now that you got Namor, Human Torch, and Toro, Bucky. Come on, man. Let me ask you this: Which one of these two films is the worst. Iron Man 3 or Thor The Dark World? Ooh. Ooh. 
Uh, the only thing you, the one thing you got out of Thor: The Dark World was the fact that um, the ether or the reality stone. Mm -hmm. Iron Man three had nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> it was almost like a, it was almost like a James Gunn, my Guardians of the Galaxy two. I want nothing to do whatever was going on with Thanos and the Infinity Stones. And he got his movies. And ladies and gentlemen, did you notice it didn't make a billion dollars? How could the sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy not make a billion dollars? And you know why? Because Mr. Gunn wanted his film to have nothing to do with the overall MCU. And that's where the other aspect that we didn't talk about in that podcast is that um, the thing with Star Wars, more, well, Disney, you start letting some of these directors dictate which way the franchises should go. And as you can see, the box office showed the end results of what happened. You did not make a billion dollars. And I know it's a, it's a risk game, it's a trust game or whatever, but guess what? You did make a billion dollars. Always stick to the system. I know some people don't like the system. Some people want a more hard-edged Zack Snyder system. But Zack Snyder system don't work at Marvel. Sorry mm -hmm. to all the fanboys who think that. Uh, that you know, you are a minority of the audience. And you got to accept <laughs> that. You know, and I don't think the studios are in the business of making movies for the minorities. The majority is who they make the movies for. It's too much money. Yeah. Pete, it's yeah. too much money. Too much money. Yeah. Too much potential money on behalf of DC. Marvel's making it all. That Eternals movie is going to be off the top. Why? Because the Eternal movie is going to show us the universe, the history we gotta, of the we, universe. We gotta, we got we to do a show on that, the Eternals. Yeah, that's going to be big. That's going to be big. I'm not too familiar with the Eternals. I've only recently, like probably like a few years ago, knew about the Eternals. Um, but I never really got into depth into who they are and, and how they've impacted the rest of Marvel, uh, the rest of Marvel. So, um, yeah, but from what so we're I saying, they're probably going to change it up a little bit. It's not going to be what we yeah. thought, what, what it is from the comic books because they don't want to say that the Eternals created the mutants and the, no, oh, a lot of this stuff is going to come from Wanda and a lot of stuff is going to come from Dr. Strange. I mean, Wanda is funny. Like you said, who's the number one? Wanda basically is about to change the whole Marvel universe. And when she said in the comic books, no more mutants. The universe changed. And when she said no more mutants, it didn't just go on Earth. It went everywhere. Yeah. And then you got to say, is Wanda the ether? Is she the reality? Star? She might be. Mm -hmm. She just might be. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And we'll be back as soon as, sooner than later. That's right. We're gonna have a, we're gonna throw down. We're gonna throw down with the lowdown. We're gonna get another one out there. We, we we're trying our best to keep happy thoughts, good conversations moving forward while we deal with this dilemma. We're lucky it's not a space invasion or any other thing else that we can't handle. Yeah. But we're glad to be here. So on uh, behalf of Nerd Generation, allow me to pitch this game tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. And that's right, the return of RDJ and what it will mean to the MCU. P, any last words to say before we probably chop it up and do another podcast sooner than later? Uh, no, nah, just for everyone to, you know, stay safe, listen to our, our, our show, because, you know, we, we, we try to provide a, a, a realm to escape to, you know? And with these conversation and, and hearing how passionate we are about the, the, the genre. So uh, continue to listen and thank you for any commentary that we get, uh, you know, from the people that I speak to who listen to the show. You know, we thank you for listening to the show and, and I hope you continue to listen and share with your, your people. That's right, because at the end of the game, boys and girls, we love this genre. Everybody stay safe. Keep the faith. And... Uh, I used to say, I used to say, go to the movies. We can't see. We, we'll, say, we'll say, go to the movies when we can go to the movies. <laughs> take, take care, everybody. Take care. <laughs>